we said there's lots of different kinds of questions you can ask. That therefore sort of implies when you have a look at the different kinds of questions, there's lots of different kinds of data you can get out of those questions. And not all data is created equally. Or I should say not all data are created equally. It's actually plural, but anyway. When you have a look at these questions and the kinds of data you get out of there, if you want to have a think about these systematically, this tree diagram will really help you. The, like I said before, the society and cultural people will be like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, this is ringing some bells. But this will kind of give you a lens to interpret, okay, what kinds of questions am I getting out of here? And which data is most useful to me in this situation? So, yes? Is a tree diagram a type of graph? Uh, I mean, a type of survey? Really? No. I guess uh, the funny thing about surveys is you can ask questions in any way you like. So I suppose, I suppose this could be. I don't. I struggle a little bit to think about the kind of question you could ask. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Like yeah, flowchart. Like yes, this question to go to five. Okay. So shh, 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 refocus. Refocus. <laughs> Sorry. Let me try and explore these with you, okay? And again, I'm going to give you the fancy names for them, but I will try to illustrate along the way what's going on. So the first kind of data, if I go along with um, these kinds of questions that we're going to get asked, if you have a scale, right, and um, you get given a question that's kind of like, oh, okay, from, from this to this, okay, there are two different kinds of ways you can say that. So the first is a categorical scale. Okay, so the simple way of thinking about categorical data is, it's words, okay? Uh, you could call it qualitative data, if you like. Um, but basically, this is verbal in some way. It involves words of some kind, right? Now, within the category of words, there's different kinds of words and answers for questions that you have to handle differently, okay? So the first one is what we call nominal Categorical data, okay? Nominal just means it's a name. So if I said to you, uh, what is your eye color, right? You would say things like blue, green, brown, whatever, okay? That's nominal categorical data. So I'm going to say eye color down here. Because you had to answer with a word, clearly. But importantly, unlike, say, for the scale, there's no order, right? It's not like, oh, blue eyes first, then green, then brown, etc. There's no reasonable way to kind of like put them in a series. On the other hand, if you have words that have an order to them, we call them originally ordinal categorical data, right? So examples are, are things like we were talking about over here, like strongly disagree, you know, neutral, agree. Or, or like uh, if you get a textbook and you have to describe the quality of that textbook, you're going to give a word like fair, terrible, falling to pieces, brand new. Those are all still words, right? But you can order them in some way, right? So for example, I'll say book quality as my example there, right? They're still words. No one would ever say, oh, I give that book a seven, okay? You'd use a word to describe it, but... <laughs> it's a solid eight. <laughs> solid eight, right. Um, you're gonna use words, but the words can be ordered, okay? Now, this is our avenue over to here. Obviously, when you're thinking about order, mostly it's going to be numerical data, right? We have a, um, a different word for that here, quantitative. As in, you can express it as a quantity, but what it really means is rather than it being verbal, it's numerical. Okay, so again, we can break this up into uh, two separate categories. You can think about numbers that can only be whole numbers. So I think before someone talk, talked about, I think it was you, Laura, who mentioned, like, how many children, how many siblings do you have? Okay, so we would say, this is a number which has to be a whole number. Again, we have a, we always have fancy days for these kinds of things. Um, we call this discrete quantitative data, not to be confused with discrete, like, you mean the same word. like, shh, be discreet about it, right? Like that's the secretive, as opposed to discrete, which actually comes from the Latin word for separate, right? So it's like one, two, three, and these numbers are separate from each other. So discrete, I mean, my example was um, number of siblings. There's actually this famous car ad back from when I was younger that said the average Australian family has 2.3 children. And then there's like this, um, this sort of spindly looking kid who's about my sort of figure, and he was like the 0 0.3 of a child. It's like, yeah, here I am. Okay. Now, that's an average, right? But the actual number of siblings in a family has to only be one or two or three. Why don't they make ads like that anymore? <laughs> no comment. I think it was a Toyota ad. Anyway, uh, the opposite of discrete, 
where you've got numbers that are chunks and they're separated out is continuous. Okay? So if I asked you for your height, it's not like you have to be exactly five foot or exactly six foot. There's a whole bunch of different things in between. There's a range. Well, you may be exactly five foot, but you might be somewhere in between. And there's no like, oh, you've got to be this one or that one. So if I say height, if you've got anything and there's a range, okay, and you could have like, you know, 152.3 centimeters or whatever it is, then we call that continuous quantitative data. Okay.